Hello and welcome. I am a concept artist. I've been working in video games for over 20 years. I want to talk to you about the concept art of Resident Evil 4. This is the remake. I had the pleasure of working at Capcom back in 2005 when the original was released. I was not on the project. I was working on a different project in the US, but it was a huge celebration for the entire company and really a turning point for Capcom. And if you're on the fence about whether to play this game, I definitely recommend you go out and get it. This is not a video about reviewing the game or whether you should play it or whatever. This is about concept art. This is about the production that goes into game development. And I thought that I might be able to give a little bit of insight into the processes if you're a concept artist and you're like, well, how is concept art used in games? And how can I tune my portfolio to be better suited to get employment at a game studio? Uh, if you are interested in concept art, I have several workshops that actually talk you through a lot of these things. This is just gonna be analysis of what they did on Resident Evil 4, the remake. There's also an hour and a half version of this video with a lot of technique and analysis breakdowns of how they did this artwork in my box set of tutorials for 2023. Now, first and foremost, working on a remake is pretty fun <laughs> because you already have something to work from. So you'll have a lot of gray box, you'll have a lot of sort of low poly versions of something that you need to add a new flavor to, more detail. You know, uh, polygon restrictions are a lot lower uh, in the sense that now you can do a lot more polygons in something. There's a lot less restrictions and a lot less technical constraints. And so that gives a lot of room for something to look almost photorealistic or really advanced. And uh, what we're gonna be looking at is a lot of images throughout the game, by the way, you can unlock a lot of concept art through playing the game just one playthrough actually will get you all of the concept art for the game. And that's what we're gonna be looking at. And when, when we look at an image like this of Leon wearing his jacket that we see at the very beginning of the game, uh, first and foremost, you won't see images that are this or orchestrated, organized. Like for instance, all this background, uh, this is like a template that you'll see uh, behind the cutout concept art that we're going to be looking at. And that's just for presentation. You know, in this case, they even like just to beautify it, they gave us a nice big close up shot of, of Leon. And this is really just presentation stuff. It's not stuff that you do when you're in development. When you're in development, you know, a lot of what you'll be doing is stuff like what you're seeing here. You know, these, uh, these sort of cutouts of just the character from the front and from the back and without the jacket. Why do we need to see him without the jacket? Like likely this was two, probably two different images in development where, or two different pages where we had, this is what Leon looks like the front and the front and the back uh, with the jacket on. And then this is what he looks like from the front and the back with the jacket off. And that's why we need to see this, like how do these straps connect and you know things like this, that. So, so a lot of the gear that the characters are wearing, you'll notice are, these are real world pieces. This is this is not like they completely redesigned the gun holster that Leon is wearing. So the artists that are making the 3D version of this, they don't need crazy levels of detail because a lot of you might be thinking, well, I don't get it. This is super loose concept art, right? You know, like these are sketches almost. But the fact is, is like if you're designing something that already kind of exists, you don't need to spend three days rendering on it to make it look photorealistic. You know, you can just sketch it in as the sort of the, you're, you're the costume designer, you know, when, um, for instance, if you watch the behind the scenes on like Yellowstone or something, you'll notice that the costume designer is really, they're not designing all new clothes, you know, they're, they're picking out things that already kind of exist. And when you're working on something like Resident Evil, you're kind of picking out things that already exist, you know? And you'll notice, by the way, the caveat to that is as we explore more of the concept art, you'll notice that they get more detailed on the things that are created, new things that didn't exist before. So uh, just in evaluating Leon's design, you know, the jacket with the the sort of the fur uh, around the, the, the neck here is designed to give us a feeling. This is like, this is not like a warm, um, you know, it's not, it's not Resident Evil 5. You're not going to Africa. It's not like a desert, you know. He's going into a place where it's probably, you know, there's temperature. That gives the feeling, uh, uh, the player a feeling of coldness. And you'll notice that when we get to the environment concept art as well, that there's going to be a lot of, like, uh, uh, it's not snowing, but it's certainly a cold environment. And it's in the tones, it's in the hues, it's in the 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 values, the contrast of things, a lot of silhouetted things, a lot of things in the darkness, you know, and it's all a lot of very cool colors as well, and especially in the exteriors. Uh, but Leon, I mean, very iconic design, but at the same time, very simple. You know, there's nothing crazy going on here. You know, this isn't Monster Hunter. You don't want to have like crazy armor and stuff, you know, and he's not going in 
uh, prepared for battle. He's he's he is uh, it's that cliche old style video game plot, you know, uh, sent in a lone uh, operative sent in to rescue the president's daughter from like a cult. OK, sounds like a, a, a John Carpenter, you know, 80s John Carpenter kind of an action movie kind of a setup. But that's communicated in the character's design. You know, everything he's wearing is tactical, but it's also very um, easy to move in. You know, he's not even wearing knee pads. Now, I'm not going to be going through every drawing or every piece of concept art because there's literally, I think, 57 images, and that would be literally a 50-hour video. Uh, but this one is uh, El Gigante, and this is a character that... Uh, it's it's kind of interesting that they don't show the uh, the plagas or the there's like a, a thing that pops out of his back at one point, and I think that in maybe another image we'll see that. Uh, but in this case, what, what did they need to show? They needed to show the immense scale of this character. Notice that there's these like the sketch off to the side. And now different studios are gonna have different standards on this sort of a thing. But the thing is, is this is necessary. These kind of like shots, like showing how the posture of this character, he is really hunched over. That needs to be communicated. You know, we need to see, you know, the shape of how his musculature is uh, uh, shaping the overall silhouette of things. This isn't highly detailed. The artist did not waste time going in and rendering the hell out of every muscle, but we needed to see the striations. We needed to see the colors. We needed to see the... Uh, the expressiveness in the character's face, for example, and we needed to see this like torn cloth, you know, but we don't need to see an artist spending a week rendering foot anatomy. Many artists, when they begin to get interested in concept art, they think that it's about studying tons and tons of um, rendering techniques. And it's really that, while that's advantageous for you to communicate your ideas, What's more important is that you understand how a modeler is going to use the concept art. And in this case, this concept artist, I believe from what we're seeing here, had given the modeler at least enough information to get started. Now, I do I do personally, personally, I would have gone in, because this isn't all just a praise video. The game is fantastic, by the way. Uh, and I've mentioned that, and I'll say it several times. <laughs> but the, the concept artist, like, I don't know how you resist going in and like adding the rendering to all the the spine coming out of the back or you know the, the the guts of this thing you know coming into the side and you'll certainly notice when you get to the environment concept art they go a lot more detailed and i think that's probably because the environment is so much of a character in this universe one thing if you're a concept artist and you're putting together a portfolio i would suggest you don't want to have a lot of stuff like this. And that's that's the confusing part. And there's it's so frustrating sometimes because in game development, yes, you want to see this. Of course, of course, you need this kind of stuff. In your portfolio, you would put more time into the rendering on things because you also need to sell to the HR department. They're not even artists. So they don't know uh, exactly whether or not your designs are good. They're just looking at, oh, this artist is a better artist than that artist. And I'm not speaking for all HR people. Uh, I don't want to like group everybody together as in, oh, they don't know this or they know that. You know, I'm not trying to, uh, that's not my fight here. What I'm trying to say is if you're a student or you're somebody who's trying to get into doing concept art, looking at what you're seeing in these, you know, concept art galleries of existing games can be very helpful. But at the same time, it, it should not be the exact standard that you should be aiming for. Certainly things like consistency of presentation. Again, you see that you know, the, the blurred background. It's blurred because that's not the important part, but it is uh, light bouncing off of things. And, and we're seeing the colors and the imp imposing silhouette and shape of this monster that, that we're designing, right? But um, that's there mostly for presentation purposes. And if you're going for presentation purposes, I'm sure, I, I almost 100% guarantee the concept artist that designed this would probably go, oh man, I really wish I would have rendered I could have gotten the time to render that side view of this character, you know, um, because no artist wants to have their work compared to directly to somebody who got to spend three weeks on one thing. To give you an idea, a concept like this, a lot of times you'll probably go through two or three iterations. So in this case, they had the advantage they were working on a re as a remake. So they had the advantage of like, well, we already kind of know what this character looks like. So they probably didn't have to do as many iterations. But if you were just designing this character, like probably I would love to see the original Resident Evil 4 concept art um, because I would love to see 
uh, you know, if, and maybe this is actually, I don't know, uh, but maybe, uh, you know, I would love to see it, the iterations that they went through. A lot of times people don't realize that with concept art for games, you're going through many iterations. And what that means is like, uh, you know, you might draw it like this and then you might, you know, the art director might say, well, we want to see like, what does it look like if his like guts are hanging down, you know, uh, or well, what does he look like if he's got like, you know, tusks or something, you know, you just try all kinds of different stuff as long as it fits within the lore. And mo most importantly, the function of like how how the the player is interacting with these monsters you know that's that's really what determines the lot of the design you don't have to be crazy creative a lot of times you just have to be a good problem solver uh this is from uh was it los lagos the the lake monster basically um again you know we do have these call outs of you know this is what these like stringy guts sort of look like but it's really a, a bit surprising that that's not a lot more detailed i would have been like my, this is a reaction video. So straight up, my reaction is like, wow, I can't believe the art director didn't insist on sending that back for, you know, tons more detail being worked out in the, the guts of this thing. And maybe, maybe it's just that they have 3D modelers who are also, you know, very good at filling in the blanks on some things like this. Uh, for instance, you know, there is a moment where the character is like harpooning into the mouth of this thing. Uh, right here and so we did need to see what does the inside of its mouth look like but this is a really really rough sketch and i'm and I'm, I'm very shocked like i am really blown away that on such a big budget uh prominent important title that uh their their designs were not more fleshed out that they didn't have more uh detailed renderings in their concept art you know um, but at the same time I also understand console development is very speedy. So oftentimes if you're the only concept artist or there's only two concept artists on a console game development project, sometimes you really don't have more than a day to work out a design. Sometimes you really only get a day. You're lucky if you get three days to work out a design. And that means iterating. And so a lot of times, you know, you'll do these rough sketches of like, what do you think of this? You show that to the art director or you show that to the 3D modeler. The 3D modeler goes, yeah, I got it. I get what you're saying. You know, maybe uh, the way I used to do it was I'd sit down next to the 3D modeler sometimes on like World of Warcraft or on Diablo uh, 3. And I would literally sit down next to the, the 3D modeler that I'm working with and we'd brainstorm. We'd come up with ideas and I'd doodle out something like that in like five minutes. You know, and then he'd go, oh, yeah, I get it. Okay. Uh, and then, I'm, you know, my job's done. I don't have to spend tons of time rendering on it because that information was given to him um, uh, or we, we resolved the, the problem. Most of game development is problem solving. And uh, you can't just throw something random at it. It really has to be conscious, like figuring out the problem here, you know. And with this particular boss fight, I'm surprised they didn't do any shots of like him coming out of the water or like where the water line sets, you know, and how much of his body is exposed because it's an integral part of gameplay where you're harpooning the back of this thing. And I'm, I'm very surprised when I, when I did unlock all the concept art for this game, I was very surprised at um, the looseness of a lot of the designs. I was very surprised that there wasn't more photo bashing in the character stuff. There is in the environments, and we'll talk about that when we get to it. But I was very surprised at just how sort of rough and loose a lot of it is. And obviously, you know, a lot of this is still buttered up nicely and presented nicely for the concept art gallery, but it's still not all the information. Like, I'm shocked there's no top view of this guy. I'm shocked that there's no, you know, more detailed uh, interior of its mouth. And in fact, the inside of his mouth doesn't even really look like that. So, you know, hey, big surprise there too. These guys are an absolute pain in the ass in the game. Um, and again, you know, I'm I'm at a bit of a loss for words. I'm very surprised that they didn't show the, um, one of the things that they do in the game is like, you have to use this, um, it's like a bio scanner so that you can see these uh, uh, plagas or uh, this infection within the inside of this body using this like X-ray kind of a vision on a scope on your rifle. You have to shoot those things through its body or you're blasting, ripping off chunks of flesh from it until you see those things exposed, the vulnerable parts exposed. And so I'm a little bit surprised that they didn't show that. Like, you know, uh, this is what it looks like when part of its guts are hanging out. In fact, I would even say that the posture of this thing is not um, is not fairly accurate. There is, there is some posing like this, but this thing moves real weird. And we don't see that in the concept art at all. Uh, one of the interesting things that's a bit of an insight on this this is a photo of a texture of probably, I would guess I would say maybe like an actual human's 
uh, body fat, like an older person. Um, but it's been, it used, uh, they used a median filter on it, which is, um, that's up here. Filter, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, noise median. Watch this. Yeah. They use this kind of a, a median filter over a photo to get that texture. Kind of an interesting uh, trick to create like a, like this sketch really came together fast. Like you could tell this was probably an hour long uh, sketch to do. And I'm, I'm just very, again, very surprised. There is a lot of insight here, uh, you know, as to what this thing looks like, but there's a lot of missing information too. And I'm really shocked we didn't see like a back view, you know, I'm, I'm shocked that we didn't look at that, that pose. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> uh, but I'm surprised we didn't see a back view. I'm surprised we didn't see like a side view. I'm surprised we didn't see like a, a cutaway of, you know, what it looks like when he's got bullet holes in the side of him. And, you know, the, the actual vulnerable part is exposed. You know, those are the kind of things that generally speaking from my experience of working in games for like 20 plus years, that's the kind of stuff that I would be, you know, asked of me uh, working on the kind of games I've worked on. But those are generally more stylized games. This is like a very demanding, realistic, photorealistic uh, game. This is kind of an interesting trick of what they did here, by the way. They just had this simple like concept art piece. And maybe there were turnarounds and maybe there were even like sketches of explorations and alternate versions. I don't know. But they decided to just go, you know, for the sake of presentation, and this is a good trick you can do in your portfolio, is, uh, you know, let's just, uh, we'll just copy that and we'll paste it over here so you get like a close-up version of the, of the head. That's the same thing. And you know what, though? Uh, if somebody glances at it on your art station or whatever, it's a better presentation. You'll see this. People do this on Instagram all the time where they'll have a really highly detailed thing. And then they'll have like the next image in the sequence is like a close up of something because there's details you don't see when you're looking at the whole thing. Um, and sometimes those details are really impressive. And I actually do think it's a pretty freaking menacing mouth on this guy. <laughs> this is, I mean, perfect example of napkin style concept art, you know? We've got literally something like this. Do not put something like that in your portfolio. It's fine that they're showing you, here's how we designed it, you know? We needed to think about uh, the skeleton under this thing. This is what it looks like when it's crouched, you know, from top down. This is what it looks like when it's fully extended, you know? Um, interesting also, when you look at like concept art from the studios I've worked at, they would never go this loose. This makes me kind of want to work for Capcom because to me, it tells me, they're not overvaluing something that isn't necessary. It's like what we're seeing is just what's necessary. You know, um, we understand uh, the design of this bug thing's face. We understand the jaw. We understand like how these tentacle things or antenna come out of the, the head. We see the exposed stuff up here, but we don't ask our artists to render on this, the concept art for five days, you know, before we just start building it. Maybe they just have really uh, reliable 3D modelers that are really great at filling in those blanks and working in synchronization with the concept artists. And if they're people who've been working together for a long time, it's kind of like when you've, you, you're good friends with somebody and you kind of finish each other's sentence, you know? I think that that's kind of what starts to happen with a really well-oiled uh, development team. And maybe that's what we're seeing a little bit of here. That's possible. It may also just be that uh, they were under a hell of a lot of deadline pressure and they're like, what's the necessary minimum? And something that you should be asking yourself quite frequently throughout development, not necessarily with your portfolio, but throughout development, is what's the minimum that I have to do to get the best results, to get the results that they need from this? And um, this is also, I, I want to I mention this too, because this is going to, everything I'm saying in this video could get some people in trouble. Looking at this concept art and analyzing it in the way that I am could get you into trouble with some art directors, because some art directors are going to really strongly disagree with me. And that's their prerogative. If they want to blow an extra $5 million of the company's budget, having their artists render the hell out of insect wings, they're free to do that. Or you could literally just hand them this design and say, here's the, the shape and construction of this creature. And then, you know what? Here's another sheet of references of insects. Put two and two together. If you got a 3D modeler that can't do that, then, then um, you know, and some of them don't. Some of them insist. I've, I've had, I've worked with 3D modelers that are like, look, I don't do anything until you have the entire thing textured, like painted to its final level of detail from top to bottom, soup to nuts. And um, I've also worked with 3D modelers who are like, yeah, give me the sketch. I like to fill in a lot of the blanks myself. So. I can't speak for the whole industry, but it's interesting to look at. It's interesting to dissect. 
Uh, so this one's interesting because they quite literally, you can tell, they took the 3D model from in-game of the armor. And this is this is so brilliant and so insightful, by the way. And it, uh, this is why I felt like I needed to make this video is because of images like this, where it's quite literally like we see just what's necessary. <laughs> like we, we, we know what the armor looks like, you know, maybe that's already designed. Maybe it was pulled out of a museum reference. I mean, this is a photorealistic game. It's set in, a, in an actual... Uh, location representative of our world where they didn't design some brand new armor from uh, that was built, uh, you know, to honor some dragon in, you know, Loth Lothlorien <laughs> lore or whatever. It's not from some fictitious fantasy realm. It's like, this is the kind of armor that a real knight would have worn. And so, but, but here's the thing. What do we need? Hmm, well, we need these uh, tentacle looking monster things coming out of the suit of armor. And you see it in the game and, uh, and you see it like in how, in the concept, they literally just went, okay, so we take the, the shoulder piece. We like, you know, let's move that out a little bit and have this stuff like busting out of the seams. You know, it's just what's necessary. We got colors. We've got some material with a little bit of that specular. We've got these like, you know, kind of veins going on here. You know, it'd be really fun, dudes. If you want to have some like some fun, just rendering stuff, like take one of these concepts and just render the hell out of it and have some fun. Like, what does it look like in game? Do like a study and try to fill in the blanks of those materials, you know, but they're not wasting a lot of time in production on the materials of these surfaces you know that's not the important part the important part is that we understand it's busting out of this thing you know and it's uh these tentacle like shapes and maybe maybe especially if this kind of um uh, organic material is defined somewhere in another concept or maybe it's already defined through uh in development maybe a 3d modeler on the team we don't we don't have the advantage of knowing what they've solved in development versus what they're solving in the concept so um, we can only speculate. This is like maybe art director notes. That That's what we could be looking at here is like just art director notes. Um, and believe me, like you know, there's there's been a lot of times throughout development of many games I've worked on where I did something like this just to get the idea approved. And because, you know, you need to design something and then like the art director would step in if, if they're very competent and decisive and they're doing their job as an art director, they would be able to look at this doodle and say, yes, I get where you're going. I like it. It's approved. And ideally, every concept artist is like hoping that we got just enough in the budget to explore that concept, that idea a little bit more and actually go in there and render it and detail it. And again, I, I don't want to speak for all of concept artists. I really want to be careful to not do that. I'm merely speaking from my experience and the, the people that I've worked with, um, the, the various different people from um, every company that I've worked with, you know, a lot of times the artists really want to go nuts on these uh, things with painting it out. We don't get to because development's demanding. This actually reminded me a lot of the concept art that I did and early Capcom stuff because it was like this. It was like silhouettes and just the mood, the atmosphere, the vibe. I'm shocked. When I looked at this, I was really shocked at like, look at how loose that is. Like, yeah, okay, those are chains. But like, those are not rendered out to be, to look like chains. Those are, this is not like the kind of art that you see in Magic the Gathering totally different and this 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 concept art for this game uh really embodies everything that i've been saying about concept art for not everything because there's a lot of things i don't agree with that they did but one of the things that it really does speak to is the intention of design in everything it's not about the rendering of the details of things it's so much more about the construction the shape the silhouette the presence the colors, the tones, the hues, the the silhouette of things, the, the construction of it is more important than the rendering of it. And I think that um, things like this are a great reminder for young concept artists to remember, don't get caught up in rendering the material on the side of a surface of something and how the light's bouncing off of that. And so uh, these, to get to get to the point, these are... This is another case, by the way, where they took this and they cut it out and just made it like a bigger close-up version of it so we can really appreciate the details, right? Uh, but something like this, I'm, I like, I, I would have not gotten away with in any of the games that I ever worked on. Um, big, wealthy American game development studios don't tend to accept this uh, type of thing in their development. I'm, that's why that's why I'm saying, like, this is an anomaly. This is weird. It's, it's, this is just straight up saying it. It's like, this is weird. Um, 
<laughs> I'm, I'm really shocked. Um, but it, to me, it tells me uh, this is a very competent team because when you look at the final product, like, ah, it's so good. It's so detailed. It's so refined. It's so beautiful. Uh, I know a lot of concept artists that worked on dark fantasy games that I worked uh, on who would be just, this would really fluster their brain to look at what what I'm showing you on the screen right now. Like, this would drive them absolutely bonkers because why don't we see the details here? That seems like it's important for a 3D modeler. Like, why is this not even defined material? Like, we it seems like that's important. Why do we not see how this thing is constructed in detail? Like, are, is, are these leather straps? Are these metal? Is it just open to interpretation? Like, props to the 3D modeler. And like, if the concept artist and the 3D modeler were just working in sync, or if this concept was done by the 3D modeler, like, dude, you guys just keep doing what you're doing. Because <laughs> the final result is bonkers. The final result is freaking astounding. But how this turned into the, the final thing, bit of a mystery to me from my experience of working in games. Bit of a mystery. I don't know what that is. Is that his guts? Is that a leather belt? When we zoom out, we can kind of see it. It seems like maybe like a, yeah, like leather straps around his belt, his waist. Not important to see his shoes. I mean, there's, there's so much missing information here that's shocking to me that this, uh, that this was included in the concept art gallery. Uh, we've got a lot of like character shots of just randos from around the village. These are just as important in game development. Like you need to be able to do this sort of a thing if you're gonna work on a game like this. Uh, Ada Wong's design, again, we see the front and the back. I feel like this is important and they're, they're probably just not including the back views. They probably did develop the back views for a lot of these characters throughout the game, but we're not seeing them in the collections. This one, I think, I don't know why particularly they chose to. You know what she needs? She needs like, she's a lot, she's very slim in this game. Look at that, look at how much better that looks. With a game like this, you unlock different costumes. So I'm sure that there were a lot of different uh, approaches and a different takes that we just don't see in that collection of concept art that's in the unlockable section of the game. But maybe it's, you know, in an art book somewhere or just internal development. One of the reasons they don't include them is oftentimes it makes people feel like there was cut content or deleted content. And in reality, games are never done. There's always cut content. There's always deleted content. We saw that it was weird with Metal Gear Solid 5, for instance, they did include a lot of uh, cut characters and cut content. And that made a lot of people feel like the game is not finished. Even though if they never showed that, people would just go, oh, well, I guess it's finished. It was an odd choice, but okay. The fact is, is that sometimes they have alternate designs. They just kind of shuffle them into the, the, the corner or in like a file uh, cabinet. And then they pull it out when they're making the sequel or spinoff or a DLC, or if they ever need to revive that character again, there's alternate outfits and alternate designs. I mean, um, I've seen that happen many times with some of the different characters that I've designed for the games I've worked on as well. I, I would be remiss if I did not talk about this guy, the merchant. What do you like, stranger? Uh, he's really, uh, really cool character. I mean, great voicing, great uh, presentation. This whole thing screams merchant, right? Like, when you look at this character, how could he be anything other than than a merchant or a hoarder, okay? Um, <laughs> that's like all he could be. Look at this, they even like went in and they're like, like somebody had fun with this. Somebody must have been like, oh my God, I get to redesign this guy because he's legend. This is a character that's like in many ways added so much to the personality and the feeling of the game that you can like uh, walk up to this guy and he always, uh, he would always have like a really quippy kind of, um, uh, lines of dialogue. They expanded on that for this. It's interesting that they added the, the the case and he's always got like this, even when you find him in game, like he sets up these shops. Doesn't really make sense because, you know, what is he, sell who is he selling to? These guys are zombie uh, plug us guys. They're like cultist zombies. So I guess like every week, some new 
you know, uh, uh, event happens, the president's daughter is kidnapped again or some other important figure and some other soldier or undercover agent from some top secret investigation bureau has to be sent in. And this is the guy who just profits from that, right? It makes no damn sense <laughs> at all, but uh, doesn't matter. For gameplay, it works. And uh, if you're tasked with designing a character that's a merchant, you damn well better have something on his garb, on his outfit, something that says... This is a character that sells stuff. And usually if it's a shopkeeper, they're carrying their shop with them. That's just, especially if, a, if it's a, a game that with a lot of adventure, you're traversing lots of different areas. And that's if you don't get to design the environment around them. We made this mistake on uh, Summoner's Rift. I designed many of the shopkeepers and I literally went through 85 or 90 different shopkeepers. And we weren't designing the... Uh, this, the, the shop itself, the location alongside the character, it was kind of mixed matched. So I ended up designing the environment for the shop and then somebody else changed the head on the main character of that uh, shopkeeper. And then that became the story. Now there's like lore about the character and all this stuff, but it came from starting with what is the function of this character? What do they do? So that the when you first lay eyes on this concept, when you first look at them, you can tell that they're shopkeeper. And that's why the, this, uh, his arm is open and we see all the wares inside of his coat. This is kind of how people used to sell things back in, back in the day too. Um, interesting that they went more into detail on this than any other concept in the whole game. <laughs> no, just with the characters, I think. Now, you remember how I was saying that if it exists in our world, then they don't need as much detail in their concept art. But if it's something new, then they need to have a lot more detail in their concept art. This is a perfect example of that that this is um, a little uh, collectible in game. A lot of times you would go around the environment and you try to like, these are hidden objects and sort of like the, a lot of open world games will have something where it's like, Hey, you got like 10 out of 17 of these things or whatever. And you have to find them in the environment and shoot them. The only indication they have is a little clockwork sound. And this is based on one of the characters in the game. And they had to actually figure out like the design of it. So you can see you got a lot more detail in this than you would get. Uh, if it were something like a character that's just wearing normal clothes or something from our world, something that exists, a gumball machine or something like that. But uh, you see that with things like this as well, which is a um, kind of a slot machine where you win these tokens, you put them into this thing and it, it's or a gotcha pawn machine, which is basically like a random thing. You don't know what you're going to get. But this doesn't exist in our real world. If it was just a regular soda machine, there's no need to have a concept art for a soda machine that exists in our world. Literally, there's no reason to have a painting of that. So concept artists spend a lot of time, wasting a lot of time designing stuff that already exists in our world. But something like this, they had to create a invention. Like this is, they probably had sketches that went into this too before it went into a final rendered state. But they are using some photo bashing techniques here. There is some, like look at the perspective on this thing is wrong, which makes me think that maybe um, you know, this is a little bit of uh, photo bashing going on here, certainly looking at some of these kind of details that are engraved into the wood surface or the way that's carved out and beveled and whatnot. Some of that probably uh, directly pulled from a chair design and likely, you know, this probably was built over a chair. Uh, the same thing with these parts as well. And you can tell which parts are painted in uh, because you'll see a little bit more of the brush strokes like here. I mean, it's, it's blatant not in correct perspective either. Whereas the lighting on this is perfection, which makes me think photo bashed. Um, and speaking of photo bashing, uh, let's take a look at some of the environment concept art. Like this is a perfect example of a lot of photo bashing. And when you really get in close, you can see it, especially down here. There's a lot of really loose and scratchy brush strokes. And check out uh, some of my videos on photo bashing. When I, I did a similar video to this about Resident Evil 8, which I also really enjoyed. And um, you'll notice like a lot of photo bashing going on in there for things like mud going on in the ground and you know, these big piles of leaves and things. And then things like the, the fence is just, it's flat brush just sketched in. Now they didn't have to go crazy detailed with it. It's really about mood and atmosphere and the construction, the structure of things. This is, this is a location that exists in the real world uh, or homes like this exist. So it's not like you can't find reference for it. Um, so it wasn't necessary to go crazy on the detail. That's again, you know, this comes back to the confusing message that concept art like this, you know, communicates, you know, like 
uh, you can create a lot of custom brushes that do things like they, they'll generate grass or tree branches or things like that. Let's see if I have a tree branch. Oh, this is more of a grass. These are all in my brush sets, by the way. Um, yeah, just like tree leaves and tree br branches and things. And look at that. I mean, you know, this is this is probably like how they did that. And then if you color dab, you know, you can put some more trees in there. Like this kind of technique is just something that's very commonplace. If it's photorealistic, you can use a lot of photos in your designs. Uh, but you just have to make sure that your perspective is correct. A lot of times people think, oh, I'll just use AI or, or I'll just use uh, photo bashing. And they're forgetting that you still have to understand, you know, where's the horizon line and you still have to have, you know, everything fitting into perspective, you know, so that it, it, it goes off into the distance to a vanishing point that's somewhere like way off camera over here. You know, every building, every structure, every part, every piece still goes into a perspective. You still have to get this reflective light you know, from up here that's bouncing off of there. Why? Because it's directly in the middle where our eye line is. Like our eye, our camera is going to have surfaces that are bouncing light off of it. And if the sky is really bright back there and you have these puddles of water, it's going to be bouncing up into the, the lens of the camera, right? So you still have to be paying attention to those things. You can't just avoid learning fundamentals of drawing uh, or of art uh, and just bash together photos of stuff that already exists. And that's a common misconception that happens that's gonna confuse a lot of people when they're trying to do concept art. This is this is where, you know, some, some people are gonna be very upset about some of even what I'm saying in this video because it doesn't go in line with their view or what they were taught. Sometimes you go to art school and they're teaching you concept art and they don't even tell you that these things happen in game development. I, d I can't explain why some people don't accept these things, but if you've worked at more than two studios, you start to find that the rules are different everywhere you go. The most important thing across all of them is the end result, the final result. What do players think of it? Are you creating in interesting and exciting environments? Is it in line with the, consistent, uh, the consistency of what people expect from that IP? Uh, and also, does it serve design, uh, the game to play design? And uh, I, this is why I think it's really important that concept artists that work in video games actually play some video games, like actually enjoy what it what it it's used as, like how how your art art and your designs are used in the final game. I also can't speak to how much of this is art directed or how much of it is created by those concept artists. You know, different studios have different levels of involvement. Sometimes the concept artists are really the art directors. Sometimes there's nobody to like say, hey, no, this is the direction we're going, you know, and and um, you'd be really surprised, uh, I think, <laughs> at some of the things that happen in game development. And uh, when I look at this concept art uh, versus the final product, I can say that this is a team from what it looks like to me. This is a team that's a well-oiled machine. Now, there's probably a lot of headaches that happen throughout game development. There always is. But when I look at the final product and I look at how efficiently they handled their concept art, the art director, the game director, and the uh, overall uh, development managers, the producers, they knew what they were doing. You know, they knew how to ship a game and they knew how to like where to not waste time, where to not waste a huge uh, part of the budget. And if you're ever going to get into directing your own games, you have to be aware of these things. And that's where experience is of incredible value. And so it's important if you're looking to get into doing concept art and video games, Get into a studio, a small studio, any studio, start shipping games. If, you, if they don't let you in the door, start making your own games. And if you re need a little bit of help, I've done some extensive workshops on this in my uh, Gumroad channel. You can check out my facility design workshop, the dark fantasy workshop, my character design workshops. And if you're absolutely new and you're just fascinated by the whole thing, check out my easy art lessons that'll teach you the basics of perspective, lighting, and anatomy and things that'll just get you going, like just, just drawing. Because a lot of these things, you don't even know what the challenges are until you're facing them yourself. And I, no amount of me telling you what it's like is gonna communicate just how challenging it can be at times. And uh, you'll always need to have that passion for it. So that's another reason why I still continue to enjoy playing video games. And I, I of course, I love to see what other people do. That, for me, that's the, the really interesting thing about doing these reaction videos is like seeing the solutions that these other developers come up with. How did they get that in there? How did they get these ideas done so fast? How did they get them implemented into the game? And how much was enough information for them to use? Uh, I would be very frustrated working with 
a uh, art director that asked me to do crazy amounts of detail in the concept art after seeing something like this. This this video might very well upset some people looking at the concept art from Resident Evil 4. We might very well upset some people working in Western studios, but it's, it's worth a discussion. I'd love to know your thoughts as well. I'm here... Uh, quite frequently, not as not quite every week anymore, but I'm here quite frequently uh, with videos like this, as well as some other videos that will keep you motivated to accomplish your dreams. That's my goal. I hope that you can uh, accomplish your art goals, whether they be to work in video games at another studio or make your own comic, whatever it is. So please do remember to sound off in the comments below. I'd love to know your thoughts and don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.